Welcome to Lesson 4b, Differential Example, Quet Flow. This lesson is an example problem where we apply the differential equations to solve a simple problem called incompressible quet flow. I'll also talk about the hydrostatic pressure. Here's the setup. We have two infinite flat plates separated by distance b. These plates are infinite both in the x direction and in the z direction out of the page. The bottom plate is stationary and the top plate is moving at constant speed capital U. I list four assumptions or approximations. The first one can be written mathematically as del del x of anything equals zero. In other words, there's nothing special about any x location. We can be here or here or in the next room and we'll see exactly the same thing. Nothing changes with x. The second one can be written similarly as del del t of anything equals zero, since the flow is steady. The 2D approximation can be written as del del z of anything equals zero. And then finally, number four is that gravity acts in the minus y direction, as shown here. So the components of g are zero, negative g, and zero. We want to do three things. Calculate v, calculate the pressure field, p of x, y in general, here p of y only, and the x component of velocity u. I copied our differential equations of motion from a previous lesson, namely mass and momentum. This is in vector form, but I want you to get used to using the tensor notation form of these equations. Either way, in Cartesian coordinates, these three terms sum to zero. Let's look at mass conservation first. By assumption 1, del del x of anything is zero. By assumption 3, nothing changes with z. Therefore, del v del y equals zero. In other words, v is not a function of y. But v is not a function of x either, by assumption 1. v is not a function of z, by assumption 3. And v is not a function of time, t, by assumption 2. In other words, v is not a function of anything. The only way this is possible is if v is constant everywhere. What is the constant? Let's apply a boundary condition. At y equals 0, the bottom wall, we know that v equals 0. There can't be any flow through the wall. So that has to be the constant. In other words, v equals 0 everywhere. This is the answer to part a. Now let's examine the y momentum equation. In tensor notation, we write it this way, and we let i equal 2 for the y coordinate. Expanding this out in Cartesian coordinates, we have these four terms on the left, then negative del p del y on the right, and for i equal 2, this term is just negative rho g. And the last term is the Laplacian of v. As I did above, I like to put the reason for crossing terms out under each term. The flow is steady, which was assumption or approximation 2. v was not a function of x by our continuity equation. In fact, v equals 0. Again, by continuity, v is 0. And this term goes away by approximation 3. Since v is 0, Again, by continuity, this whole Laplacian term goes away. So this equation reduces to del p del y equal minus rho g. But we make a similar argument as we did above, namely, p is not a function of x, z, or time t. Therefore, p is at most a function of y. So this equation can be rewritten as dp dy is minus rho g where we just use a total derivative d instead of a partial derivative del, since p is only a function of y. Well, this can be integrated easily, since rho and g are both constants. p is minus rho g y plus a constant, which is just a hydrostatic pressure. Again, we apply a boundary condition. Namely, at the lower wall, we let p equal p sub w. Plugging in y equals 0, this term goes away. And this constant is therefore equal to pw. So finally, p equal pw minus rho gy. This is our answer to part b. To calculate the x component of velocity u, we use the x momentum equation. We let i equal 1 in the Navier-Stokes equation. Again, I'll write it out in Cartesian coordinates, where this time I wrote out the Laplacian. Many of these terms go away. The flow is steady. Nothing is a function of x. v is 0. The flow is two-dimensional. Nothing is a function of x. There's no gravity term in the x direction. Again, approximation 1 and 3. So there's, in fact, only one term remaining. And this equation reduces to 
del squared u del y squared equals 0. But similar to what we did with pressure, u is not a function of x, z, or t. u is a function of y only. So this equation becomes d squared u dy squared equals 0, where again we replace del with d. Sure, it's amazing that this huge equation reduces to just one term. Well, Sean, that's because this is such a simple example. That certainly won't always happen. Yes, uh, thank you, sir. We integrate once to get du dy equals some constant c1. We integrate again to get u equals c1y plus some other constant of integration c2. This is our answer for u, but we apply the boundary conditions to find these constants. At y equals 0, there's no slip, so u equals 0. And when you plug y equals 0 in here and u equals 0 here, you can see that c2 must be 0. And at the upper plate, u equal capital U. So this equation becomes capital U equals c1 times b, since the upper plate is at y equal b, and c2 was already found to be 0. So c1 is u over b. Finally then, u is just capital U y over b, which is the solution to part c. What does this flow look like? Well, here's our two walls and our x and y coordinates. The upper plate is moving at speed u, and the bottom plate is stationary. And this equation is simply linear, so u of y increases linearly from 0 to capital U across this gap. I want to make one final comment. We had this expression for pressure, which we recognize as simply a hydrostatic pressure that increases as we move down. What I want you to note is that this hydrostatic pressure has no effect on u of y. We get this same solution, this linear velocity profile, and the pressure result separately. We could just as well have solved this with no gravity, or with gravity acting into the page, for example. We would not change this solution. This turns out to be the case for a lot of simple flows, where there's a hydrostatic component of pressure that kind of superposes itself on the overall pressure of the flow. So we'll see this in other problems in the future. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.